been a week you've been waiting for this moment. Yes, open the gate, it's here for you. Now, now with Quentin Veron. Hello, Quentin. Hi. How are you? I'm good, and you? Thank you so much for coming on our plateau. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Tonight is going to be all about fur, hair, crazy projects, uh, amazing collaboration, customers, um, like crazy ideas and things to share and a bit like to know more about yourself. Okay. So maybe we could start with like knowing more about where you're from and your formation. Yeah, so basically I come from a horse rider, horse riding family. So I've been living for horses all my life and from Auvergne, which is in the middle of France and in, in between Auvergne and, and Fontainebleau, which is next to Paris. Okay. So yeah, I was always with animals, was surrounded by animals and stuff like that. And so I guess it's why now I'm doing fur because like you can feel in the horse riding, you can feel like the handcraft and everything, like all the leather and hair and stuff like that. Being a furrier is a very old craft and a very old job. I mean, when you talk about furriers, they're like 90 years old and they talk about their job like if it was something that's been born like centuries ago. And you are the young generation. You take this very old craft that could be like old fashioned with like old ladies wearing their mink hanging on the floor. I mean, it's not easy. Like mink is a very old material and you make it more fancy, more chic and more rock and roll, I must say. What are the tricks that you've been uh, putting into your work to make it so young and so uh, cool? Well, so I think like the difference with other furriers, like furriers, they come from furrier family, so they only know about fur. I come from fashion school, mm -hmm. so as I come from fashion school, I came with my stylist eye, mm -hmm. and loving the handcraft form because fashion was this for me. For me, fashion was just being in workshops, working the handcraft. So uh, I think like the, the difference, like you, when you come with ideas and styles, after you learn the, the techniques to 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 make them. Okay. The difference is they think about techniques and after they think about style. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. We do it we, we the opposite way, so it's different. So it's, I think it's why we have like a different touch on it. Okay. So you, you've been building a kind of uh, entourage and a bit of a fan club because when I see you like working, you have like all those people with hat, fur. You've been creating and playing with codes that are very famous, like a bit of Western, a bit of pirate somehow also. Yeah. You have all those very masculine, tough and very uh, cool um, codes into your work. Where is this coming from? Because you said that you're coming from this horse rider family. I mean, I guess it must help a lot? I, thi I think it comes a little bit from that, but as well, it's just when I was at school, when we were in fashion, uh, I was I would never wanted to go into the intellectual stuff, you know, yeah. I was always going to, my inspiration come from uh, from uh, middle age, from a uh, prehistoric thing, from uh, from pirates, uh -huh. from, from from gangsters, from cowboys, from all those stuff, and so what I do is like, I, all those clothes are on me when I, when I dress up, they yeah, are, they are it's all you. on me. You know, it's baroque, but sometimes you have the, you have the, the cowboy hat, but you have the the middle aged boots, you know. So I think all those things comes from like what I love is just you know, the, the masculine codes, as you okay. say. And even for women, I think it's interesting. Like when I when I do the collection, the women's collection, I want to have strong women. Yeah. I don't want to have like little girls that are being taken care of by their men. Mm -hmm. I want to have girls that can take care of themselves. Okay. So it's why I use also masculine code, even the women's thing, you know. Okay. You've been playing with all those original and very uh, new vibes into the fur and also it's not it was not enough for you you had to add something very special all the way that you present your show show or presentation i must say it's a bit new in paris because you present into the couture so we have like the best creme de la creme <laughs> of the world coming into paris you invite them and they, they arrive into like presentation where women are dancing into a classical atmosphere or they, they go into cave and they see like skeleton uh, with uh, presentation and fur on them or again like a big hangar where you have like a random catwalk show but with like very hardcore models with that uh, this amazing attitude. Uh, is this something that you feel comfortable because fur is a luxury, the price is high and you really put your clientele into this very young and underground uh, scene. How do, how how do you make it work? How do they understand this? Well, that's the idea I wanted for me when I started to work for I didn't understand why it was so much in the luxury. I wanted to bring it down a little bit to have more, a bit more fun and, and to, to go to some other places, you know, like I don't want to have paillettes and strass on my mm -hmm. fur. I want them to feel a bit dirty and stuff like that. Yeah. And basically it's what the clients love. Yeah. Because actually they feel like, uh, they feel, they feel, they feel like they have money to buy the fur, of course, because mm -hmm. it's expensive, but they feel like they come down to the street a little bit, you know. It's kind of like, I think, I realize, like, lately, it's kind of the aura of everyone. Like, Givenchy does a lot of stuff, like, really hip-hop and stuff like that. So, yeah. so, you know, I think it's kind of the aura right now. And me, I really wanted to show the people fur, 
for me, when I do a piece of fur, I want the girl to go to a red carpet on Saturday night to wear it with a beautiful dress. And the morning after, when she's, when she's hangover, she goes to the supermarket with a destroyed jean and a pair of sneakers, and she puts the same fur on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want those, those, those two aspects of the fur. So, I mean, it's very interesting the way that you, that you see things and also the way you work. I mean, many furriers could like, spend a lot of time and do like, a huge production and send it to all the best shops of the world. You are more into a special service, like you, you give appointments and some like made to measure. How does this really work into your studio? Well, it works in the point like basically where all the celebrities I work for or all the private clients I have, like they come for because they want, they trust me. So mm -hmm. basically they ask me, they say to me, I want a black coat, I want a brown coat. So they, they, don't, they don't really ask for something really special. Like they, they, after, after they just want a coat for me. Yeah. So after I can do, I do it as I want. Or I, come, I go with them, I show them some skins, some colors that we like. And after they just said to me, so, okay, well, do whatever you want. I want a long coat, I want a short jacket, I want a whatever. Wow. So, and basically they said to me, like, you do whatever you want. So okay. that, that's a bit like how it works. And I think it's really interesting. I love to do that because for me, fur, when you walk a skin, you really give a, you really give a soul to the, to the piece you make. So to make a piece for a special person, it always will look amazing to this person because you made it for this person. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to work for only private people and do pieces exclusive for them. Okay. And is there like any people like customers or even like friends that are really like important in your entourage that have been yeah. helping you for your... Uh... Well, Kappa from Citizen K. Is one Kappa, of, yeah. Kappa from Citizen K is one of, the, one of my best clients and the one who supports me for, for a long time. After you have Nina Garcia from Marie Claire US, mm -hmm. who is like one of the good clients and helps me a lot. Uh, after you have uh, uh, all the Ryan Leslie family, you know, the music producer like Kanye West, Kim Kardashian stuff, there are like people that buy a lot. Megan wow. Fox as well buys a lot of stuff. Uh, after Pete Dirty and all the rock bands from France, like Bebe Brune and, um, and, um, and as well like Le Spark, it's a new group I'm, I'm, I'm designing for, uh, they really helped me because they helped me to get out of the collection sometimes and just mm. like to, to, to show like the real life or I would dress up. I dress them, dress them like me, but they have an, an identity too because they're artists. Okay. So it's what I feel interesting too is to just to be able to put yourself into someone who has personality. So it makes a mix okay. that is really beautiful. Okay, cool. So this is all being like clever and commercial, the way you've been working. I also know that inside of yourself there is an artist and the way that you express it with collaboration or like special projects is very important to your work. Uh, is there anything exciting and special that you would like to share? Yes, yeah, there is something com going to come up with Jean-Paul Good. We had the idea a special piece for him. Like I work a lot with him, but that is something special. Like he's like, going to come out. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. We don't know yet on, on who is going to be shot, but he's <laughs> supposed to be like a big designer, and he's supposed to be a big singer. So it's really interesting. Okay. I, I would like really like mm, to do is to work for for a movie. Yeah. Like to do really like costume for a movie. I would, my dream would be to do it with Tim Burton because he inspired me from the beginning. Of course. Uh, it was my inspiration, but yeah, I would like, I got some proposals like from DreamWorks and from, from another, for another film, but uh, it's not yet what I wanted to do yet. So, but I really, I really want to do that. I think it would be really fun. On one shot, I don't need to make it my job. Yes. You're still very young and you just like finished your school like maybe three, four years ago. It was like, you know, it was more, it was eight years ago actually. Eight years ago. I started really young, I started the school at 17 years old. Okay. And now you're around 26, right? Yeah, I'm going to be 26 next month, yeah. And you're in Paris, the city is very expensive and it's hard to survive and you seem very comfortable with all your projects. Yeah, but I, I guess I got lucky. I mean, I can just give it to luck. When I launched my brand, it worked from the day one. So, yeah. I, like, so after we auto produce ourselves, of course it's hard once in a while, but no, why not? It's comfortable because the client know my name and so now I don't have really troubles for that. For mm. that. Like I sell a lot, so it's really interesting. So. But it's really hard. I mean, I, I don't understand how can I mean I don't understand how I did it, and I don't. I, I, if someone would say to me, "I'm young, I want to build my brand," I would say like, "Oh God, you're gonna yeah. have a hard time." <laughs> yeah, that's that's the weird thing about yeah. it because you're very young and you've made it, and it needs to be encouraged by other people, yeah. and, and you're work. a bit of an inspiration also. So uh, yeah. I want I want to make sure that the people that are watching us now can really feel that if you're young and if you have talent and you really want to go for what you want to do. It's doable. Yeah, you can do it. Uh, if you work day and night, you can do it. There is no problem. But you party day and night also, so hard work and hard party, right? Exactly, it's important too. <laughs> you know? So inspiration for the night and working hard exactly. for the result. Exactly. Very good. But you have to be at work in the morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Quentin, thank you so much for coming to Thanks open to the you. gate. Thanks to you. And we will be looking forward and we wish you all the best for your movie because this sounds really amazing. Thank you, thank you. I hope. Very good. See you soon then. See you soon. It was Open the Gate with Quentin Véron. 
and I see you next week. Same time, same place.